Freedom Tunes. I'm a brilliant intellectual. As am I. The two of us are sick and tired of dealing with troglodytes and have moved into a bomb shelter so we don't catch the stupid. To stay sharp, we spend our days pursuing the pastime of true intellectuals. Debunking YouTube videos. We are... the debunkers. Should someone have to have a government-issued license to drive a car? Hell no! What's next? Requiring a license to make toast in your own damn toaster? The license to drive? You know, I'd like to see some competency exhibited by people before they drive. Libertarianism, America's favorite political sideshow. While they're often looked at as just a fringe group of political whack jobs who think that the road to Stalinism is paved with driver's licenses, the truth is their ideology is much more influential and dangerous than you probably realize. Oh, I'm sure you're going to tell me how. Because libertarianism isn't so much a political philosophy as it is a religious ideology where the Lord and Savior is pure, unadulterated capitalism. Ah, what a perfect summarization of libertarianism. Not wanting the government to interfere in your life means you worship capitalism. Yes, sounds very religious indeed. The belief, on the other hand, that government can solve all of our problems with the wave of a magic wand is the most sound approach to take. See? I can misrepresent your argument as well. Invisible hand of the free market, take the wheel. <laughs> Please, leave the comedy to anyone else. American libertarianism is the idea that government is evil and needs to be dismantled. First of all, the fact that your symbolic representation of libertarianism is the Libertarian Party logo displays a gross misunderstanding of libertarianism as an ideology. The Libertarian Party, as can be seen in the image you are using, was founded in 1971, whereas libertarianism as a belief system has existed arguably since the Enlightenment. Yes, and secondly, your explanation is unsurprisingly an oversimplification and mischaracterization of libertarianism. Libertarianism is simply the rejection of the use of force. Given that the state is the societal apparatus to which we delegate the use of force, it makes sense that libertarians would want less government interference in their lives and everyone else's. Libertarians don't see society as a collective, they instead champion radical individualism. Wrong! Some libertarians do see society as a collective, whereas some don't. Once again, libertarianism is a matter of rejecting the use of force. Just because one wishes for less government interference doesn't necessarily mean they're an individualist. Many libertarians do believe in individualism, but others don't. One can believe society is a collective to some extent while still understanding that the best way to achieve the greater good is not to simply delegate any and every difficult task to the state. Yes, and furthermore, you seem to be engaging in the typical fallacious conflation of society and government often seen coming from proponents of big government. Just because one doesn't believe the government is best suited to engineer our behavior, doesn't mean they don't believe in other, more efficient and ethical mechanisms of social cooperation. What you're really arguing boils down to, Libertarians don't want me to use the government to force them to do things. Therefore, they're antisocial and don't understand cooperation. You see the irony, no? They see the free market as a force for absolute good. Incorrect. We do not see the market as a force for absolute good. We simply don't believe the best way to correct market errors is through state intervention. Many, if not all, libertarians disagree vehemently with actions taken by businesses or private individuals. But once again, we don't believe the best way to deal with this is to force our beliefs onto them and make them behave the way we would like using threats of state action. Indeed. Simply not wanting the state to interfere with something is not the same as blindly worshipping that thing. And government is solely a corrupting force. One of the primary ways they express these beliefs is by shrieking about taxes constantly. Taxation is theft. Taxation is theft. Taxation, quite frankly, is theft or armed robbery or extortion. Yeah, I'll give him that. But in all seriousness, are we really the only ones discussing taxation? Does the left not also shriek about it quite a bit, though to increase them rather than cut them? 
We want more people to be able to keep their hard-earned money, whereas you would rather everyone be forced to pay whatever you decide they should cough up in order to fund inefficient social programs, which your subjective preferences happen to suggest to you are worthwhile at the moment, all the while the state continues to spend more than it takes in. Yes, interesting how when we clearly have a spending problem with the government burning through $10 billion per day, an amount we couldn't really afford at any level of taxation, your solution is to continue to take even more money from people despite the fact that it won't truly offset the costs, and that the only way this kind of thing could ever work is if the rules and laws of mathematics were to suddenly rearrange themselves in order to make your system sustainable in the long term? Oh, but how religious of us for not seeing it your way. We worship the market. Oh. Yup, taxes are just like robbery, except instead of taking your television away, they take your trash away. Which, which is nice. It's nice. Sure, paying taxes doesn't feel good, but once you factor in all the bridges and schools and firefighters and roads and whatnot, it does seem like kind of a fair trade. Worst trade deal maybe ever signed anywhere. A fair trade? Losing nearly 50% of my income to pay for things, all of which existed before a federal income tax, is a fair trade to you? But don't you dare mention roads to libertarians. Ah, the old who will build the roads. Roads, roads, roads. Where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs> no, seriously, we need roads. I like how he plays Austin Peterson's clearly tongue-in-cheek response and uses that as license to imply libertarians just don't want roads to exist. Yes, the market can produce computers, automobiles, high-speed web infrastructure, and continue to improve upon and develop all of these things in radically short periods of time, but there's no conceivable way that peaceful individuals cooperating could ever construct flat surfaces for cars to go on. Libertarians have an almost cult-like adherence to the idea that government is bad and the free market is God. You've already said this and I've already debunked it. I mean good. I mean God. The free market can solve the problems of the environment. When it comes to health care, what we need is a real free market approach to health care. The Thanksgiving feast came because they had private property rights and they had free markets and that's how we will take care of the poor. That's actually entirely true. Research John Smith's famous He Who Doesn't Work Doesn't Eat policy in Jamestown. And lo, the burning bush said unto Moses, Don't worry about paying taxes, my dude, for the invisible hand of the free market will take care of everything. And it was said that taxes must be as high as they are now, and if we ever stop spending every penny of the ten billion dollars we shed every day, all of society will devolve into total anarchy despite the fact that our massive and bloated government infrastructure is a recent development. And yay, the bush soon became a forest fire and burned down Moses' village because there were no taxes and thus no firefighters. Oh, rather hilarious indeed. This absolutely debunks libertarianism as libertarians are A, currently working to defund fire departments, apparently, and B, all entirely against the idea of minimal state funding. But lo and behold, what if, in a strange twist, it turns out it may be possible that someone who's against having half of their income stolen to pay for bloated state bureaucracies might be okay with having 5% of their income taken to pay for roads and a fire department. So what would a completely free market approach to healthcare look like, according to Gary Johnson, who was ultimately selected as the Libertarian nominee for president? Not my nominee! We would have health insurance to cover ourselves for catastrophic injury and illness, and we would pay as you go in a system that was very, very affordable. We would have stitches are us. We would have gallbladders are us. We would have uh, x-rays are us. Gallbladders are us? Hey, are you tired of those leaky gallbladders that you have to swap out every six months like a common windshield wiper? At Gallbladders R Us, we guarantee a leak-free bladder for only $19.99. That's right, I said $19.99, I must be crazy. People were like, wow, I didn't even know gallbladders could be that cheap, but they can't be because they're made out of plastic. We also got dogs. Okay, but what about poor people or old people who can't afford organs from Gallbladders R Us? Like, how would libertarians help them? I'm not going to get into the entire argument on private charity because that would be its own video. But you should Google some of the stuff that Seamus for the Foundation for Economic Education has done on it. It explains how quite a lot of this stuff works.
Oh, and he's so handsome, too. How many people in here, and I actually do want a show of hands, love grandmas? How many of you would donate money to feed grandmas? I do not see a single person that did not raise their hand. That's how you fund Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare. And as for grandpas, f*** them. There's a kind of charming faith-based optimism when it comes to the way that libertarians view private enterprise and human nature. A bit like the childlike faith-based approach you take towards the state, believing that despite the fact that the government was the number one ender of human life in the 20th century, that this time, if we just get it right, a massive and overpowered state system will do nice things for me, rather than take advantage of the very power I've given it to exploit myself and the rest of the population. Scary and delusional, but charming. Just listen to libertarian candidate John McAfee's reasoning when explaining why we don't need government-funded social programs, because we can rely on each other uh -uh. none of us are going to pass a child drowning in a river even if we're dressed in a tuxedo heading to our wedding libertarianism is not heartlessness it's the opening of the heart to your neighbor oh speaking of neighbors a uh, true story john mcafee was wanted by police in belize in connection to the murder of his neighbor so mm, he's sweet Ah, so much wrong with this. First off, John McAfee's view here does not represent all of libertarianism. Again, notice all he's been doing throughout this entire video is attempting to dismantle the viewpoints of the previous cycle's candidates for nomination in the Libertarian Party, which many, if not most, libertarians don't identify with, rather than researching libertarian theory from Locke or Rothbard or Mises or any of the intellectual tradition's best representatives. And once he's done going after McAfee, an obviously easy target, he wraps up his non-arguments in his neat little bow of a horribly unfunny attempt at humor. The idea that we don't need laws because people will do the right thing anyway. It's not libertarianism. Have fun taking down your straw man, though. Or that we don't need taxes because people will fund important things anyway. Or the idea that we don't need regulations because companies will be ethical anyway. Wrong again! Libertarians don't argue companies will be good absent regulations simply out of the goodness of their own hearts. We argue that the private market is regulated by consumers who tend not to want to patronize companies who act against their interests. Hence why the CEO of Twitter was basically blacklisted for eating Chick-fil-A. None of that is born out of any statistics, historical precedent, or any other evidence of any kind. Well, if you're searching that without offering any statistics, evidence, or historical precedents, it must be true! It's the same kind of faith-based thinking as Santa is real, or Ted Cruz is human, and not just someone wearing a Batboy mask that got melted in a microwave. While libertarians might be anti-driver's license, anti-Medicare, and anti-public roads, the flip side of being so rigidly anti-government is that they also end up being anti-NSA, anti-interventionist, and anti-drug laws, which appeals to people on the other side of the political spectrum. In fact, the common elevator pitch for libertarianism is that while fiscally conservative, they're also socially liberal. Remember, air quotes makes things not true. I believe in a world where gay married couples can protect their marijuana fields with fully automatic machine guns, baby. Oh yeah. Yay. Wait, hold on, why do we need machine guns if weed is legal? Oh, it's the world's more dangerous? Libertarian world's more dangerous. It's more dangerous. I literally can't take any more of the unfunny. But the socially liberal side of libertarianism is less about a belief in civil rights being law and more that civil rights are less important than property rights. Not only did your statement not actually mean anything, but I would like to remind everyone that property rights are a basic human right and societies without them don't last very long. Listen to libertarian darling Senator Rand Paul explain his thoughts on the 1964 Civil Rights Act. I like the Civil Rights Act in the sense that it ended discrimination in all public um, uh, domains and I'm all in favor of that. But. <laughs> You had to ask me the butt. Um, I don't like the idea of telling private business owners. I abhor racism. I think it's a bad business decision to ever exclude anybody from your restaurant. But at the same time, I do believe in private ownership. Wow, I abhor racism, but that should definitely be the new libertarian slogan. Libertarianism, I abhor racism, but... More jokes, more funny, funny jokes. Interestingly, the host here ignores the main goal of the Civil Rights Act was to repeal Jim Crow laws. Let me repeat myself. 
Jim Crow laws, as in laws made by government. And this isn't just Rand Paul. Libertarians often deflect on questions of civil rights. Not deflecting, just not playing into your historical ignorance and giving you what you want to hear. Mr. McAfee, would you have voted in favor of the 1964 Civil Rights Act had you been in the Senate? As many of you know, my wife is black. And having spent three and a half years living 24 hours a day with her, I can assure you that legislation in no way ended discrimination. Certainly not in my home. I have my own whites only bathroom. She's not allowed. Wow, your continued futile attempt to say anything remotely comical has led you to suggest that a man hates and or discriminates against his own wife because he doesn't agree with you politically. So it's clear that libertarianism represents the furthest right-wing fringe of economic conservatism. They're basically like the Stalinists of the right. Uh, no, that would be the Nazis. Nice try. They're like that tanky Facebook friend you have that keeps sending you those Mao Zedong memes. It's funny because he's fiending moderation now. The only difference is that unlike your one lonely tanky friend, there are literally millions of libertarians. My, it's almost like this is a false equivalency. In fact, one out of 10 Americans identifies as a libertarian. So according to you, that should mean that one in 10 Americans doesn't want fire departments or any of the other absurd accusations you threw our way. Yes, this is quite fun actually. You see, the first half of the video was spent arguing that libertarianism is this bizarre fringe system of thought which entails all sorts of beliefs unthinkable to 99% of the population. And now he's going to contradict that sentiment by arguing that libertarians make up a large enough percent of the population to be a serious threat to maraudes. Think about that. If one out of 10 Americans describe themselves as believers of the Juche religion of North Korea, the United States would declare a state of emergency. Yes, it's almost as if the U.S. was founded on libertarian principles and it isn't an invasive and violent ideology which leads to the state extermination of its citizenry. Oh my, it's almost as if this false equivalency he's been peddling is a false equivalency. But no, these people are fine because they don't worship Kim Jong-un, they worship Kim Jong-ein. Oh, these people are fine because they don't worship Hitler, they worship Obama. You see how that sounds? You see how dumb that sounds? The joke is good. It's a good pun. Please kill me. So how did such a fringe political ideology gain so much ground in America? Because it laid out the foundational framework for this country and the very ideology present within the constitutional is itself a form of rather radical libertarianism. Well, not shockingly, it turns out that libertarianism is very popular with the very rich, specifically among the political donor class. Really? Well, if libertarianism is popular among the very rich, who according to the left run this country, why is it that the more libertarian a candidate is, the less likely they are to be supported by either of the mainstream parties or the mainstream media? There's Peter Thiel, the Silicon Valley billionaire and Trump supporter. Uh, the most libertarian billionaire he can find is this one dude who's actually just a Trump supporter? There's Richard Mellon Scape, the libertarian billionaire who, along with Thiel and the Koch brothers, helped to fund the anti-taxation party, the Tea Party. You remember them. The guys who swept into power in 2010 and made John McCain look appealing. And of course there's the Koch brothers, both lifelong libertarians. Before they became the Statler and Waldorf of our political puppet show. Hey, that's us! David Koch was actually the libertarian candidate for vice president in 1980. They've spent decades using their money to drastically lower personal and corporate taxes. Oh no! Cut social services for the needy. Yes, they cut social spending on the needy and then turn around to donate literal millions to charity. Oh no, it's almost as if they believe helping the needy themselves instead of forcing every single taxpayer in the country to fund a failed war on poverty and end government oversight of industry, especially environmental regulation. Oh, and of course, donating like crazy to Republicans. And all that could in part explain why Republican presidential candidates now sound just as unhinged as libertarians. First, let's listen to some of the libertarians running for president. We would abolish the Federal Department of Education. What on earth is wrong with that? The Federal Department of Education costs $68 billion per year and is almost entirely redundant and useless and worthless and stupid and causes problems. So you would have no EPA? Pardon? You would have no environmental oh, protection no agency. Absolutely, sir. So let's abolish the IRS. All right, and now let's listen to some recent Republican candidates for president. 
I believe we should abolish the Federal Department of Education. I would abolish the Department of Education. We get rid of the IRS. I would uh, abolish the Department of Energy, which has failed totally since the mid-1970s. Uh, right I am away. going to cut big, big Department of Education. Yeah, me cut education big, big. What does he want, anarchy? While Trump has yet to actually abolish any departments, he has appointed Betsy DeVos, an anti-public school billionaire, and Scott Pruitt, a climate change denier who constantly sued the EPA as attorney general, to head them. Ew, Trump, a Republican candidate with nothing to do with libertarianism, has appointed people you don't like? Libertarianism debunked. Which is essentially like putting a time bomb in both departments. And while Republicans aren't asking us to donate to some sort of voluntary grandma fund, Republican plans for social programs include work requirements for Medicaid, cutting Social Security, and privatizing Medicare. Oh no, those dirty libertarian attitudes of acknowledging economic realities have rubbed off on those Republicans. Which is like meeting libertarians in the middle of the libertarian platform. Side note, why does their logo look like a sewer lid? These libertarian free market ideals are even catching on in liberal Silicon Valley. And that's because many of the billionaires at the top of the food chain know how to run a business and understand economics and are self-described libertarians like Thiel or Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a self-described socialist and this other fellow was a Trump supporter as you mentioned, so not exactly the best examples. And former Uber CEO Travis Kalanick. Libertarians have formed a symbiotic relationship with liberal tech companies because they offer capitalist solutions to problems that are largely caused by capitalism. Ah, oh, the big bad boogeyman word, capitalism. I'd like a citation for that statement that the majority of problems are caused by capitalism. The model of the future is Uber. It's Uber everything. It's Uber uh, uh, accountant, it's Uber doctor, uh, it's Uber electrician, it's Uber plumber. Uh, does anyone else think that sounds suspiciously similar to the gallbladders are us plant? I'm pretty sure Gary Johnson just has one plan. The libertarian ideology has been pulling mainstream politics to the right for decades now. Uh-oh, it's been ever so slightly pulling itself towards libertarianism. But given your conflation of Trump administration policy and ideological libertarianism, I wouldn't expect you to know the difference. This belief that the free market is God is now so deeply embedded in our politics. A straw man? ...that liberals who define themselves as being against racism, sexism, and classism now completely ignore the role of capitalism in creating racism, sexism, and classism. Ew. Wrong. So much wrong in one sentence. Yes, it's almost as if this leftist social justice rhetoric has clumsily disguised Marxism or something. When you ignore the effects of someone's economic beliefs that lead to discriminatory practices because that person says they're socially liberal, you end up looking at people like Rand Paul and going, uh, he's basically Malcolm X. Not a point, not a joke either. Honestly, this has been a rather difficult video to comment on given the large presence of utter non-arguments. At some point it just gets taxing. Yes. And taxation is theft. Hey, beautiful people. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see Freedom Tunes continue with the weekly uploads, please consider donating at patreon.com slash freedom tunes, making a one-time donation at paypal.com slash me, or purchasing a t-shirt at the link in the description. Thank you so much.